So yesterday uh, we had been uh, seeing uh, seen that, or we are looking into the normal and shear stress on an inclined plane. Okay, so we saw the sign convention. What sign convention will adopt? Then we took a uniaxial stress system. Okay, uh, that is uniaxial stress system, something like this, uh, subjected to one directional stress or stress along one direction okay so with that we obtained what are the normal and uh, sharing stress on the inclined plane and also we went for finding the maximum stresses maximum normal stress which we call them as principal stress the plane on which uh, maximum normal stress act are called principal planes okay so this is what uh, we are into Okay, or what we have seen over there. So I shared one uh, that slide as well as this derivation with you. I hope you have gone through that, at least the uniaxial stress system. So okay, uh, so this is for a uniaxial stress. What is the normal stress? Okay, and uh, how do you obtain the principal stresses? It is a maximum stress, so this cos square theta should be one for that purpose. Okay, so if you equate that cos square theta equal to one, you will also get what is the value of theta. Okay, so that theta is indicating us the inclination of the uh, plane or the principal plane, the inclination of the principal plane. Okay. Similarly, you can also go for finding what is the maximum shear stress. Okay, so that is what you can do. So here we have the maximum principal stress or the, uh, so the sorry the maximum normal stress or the principal stresses what we call them. Okay, and what are the direction of these planes are here? One plane is perpendicular to the axis of the member, other is parallel to the axis of the member. Okay, then we came across this general state of stress. What I mean by this general state of stress is you have biaxial normal stresses which are applied on this member. Okay, here sigma x is one stress along x direction, sigma y is a normal stress along y direction. Along with this, you also have the sharing stress tau xy. Okay, and this is our inclined plane BC which is passing through this element. So here we are taking the inclination as theta with respect to this vertical. Okay, so after that, once we pass this plane through this element, we'll consider one part of this element. The left part of this element has been shown over here. Okay, so what are the stresses which are acting here? So we have three phases here. One is this AB, AC, and this inclined phase BC. So on these three, three phases, you will be having the stresses acting over there. Okay, so if I take this plane AB, I have the normal stress sigma x acting on this plane or on this face and the sharing stress on this face AB is tau xy. Okay. And the area of this face is obtained by taking this AB into the width of the element, which is one unit. So AB into one will be the area of this face. Okay. Keep that in mind. Then taking this phase AC, if I take this phase AC, what are the stresses acting on this phase? One is normal stress, which is sigma y in y direction. Other is the sharing stress on this plane, which is tau xy. Okay, so two stresses are acting on this phase AC over here. Now this inclined phase, on this phase, we have to find out what are the stresses acting. Okay, we need to obtain the expression for the stresses acting on this inclined phase. So what we'll assume is the normal stress is sigma n and the tangential stress is sigma, uh, sorry, tau n t, okay? So t is the tangential direction here, okay? And n is the normal direction, okay? So this n is perpendicular to this phase, this direction n, it is perpendicular to this phase pc, whereas t is the direction which is tangential or parallel to this plane bc, okay? So we are working with n t plane. Okay, this is NT plane, like XY plane, we'll ha have now NT plane here. Okay, so normal stress will be acting along this N direction that is taken as sigma N. 
and the tangent stretch stress will be acting out along the t direction okay all of t axis which is nothing but to and t like we have to x y it is to and t over here in this case okay now after that what we have to do is consider the equilibrium condition okay so we'll evaluate the equilibrium of this element along n direction and along t direction okay so that is summation of all the forces along n direction should come out to zero and summation of all the forces along t direction should come out to zero okay so i'm calling them as forces summation of forces on this element what we have represented are all stresses here so these stresses have to be converted to forces first then you have to add them up and equate them to zero okay so for that how you are going to do when i take summation fn equal to zero let us take only this n direction okay if i add up all the forces along n direction and equate them to zero how you are going to do that is so first is sigma n is there directly we will take this uh, force resulting due to sigma n along n direction so sigma n is the stress acting along n direction okay so this stress will be distributed all over the area we are not showing that okay it will be actually applied on the entire area but here we are showing only one point on one point okay we can uh, imagine this as a resultant of all the stresses okay so like that so how do i obtain this force so this stress multiplied by the area on which it is acting so that is the area of this space bc so what i have done here is sigma n okay into the area of space bc which is bc into one unit okay this will give me what is the force along n direction here okay then what about the sigma x there is a force or stress which is there on this space ab acting in x direction so due to this what force is developed in n direction along this n axis along this axis okay so what i have so this x axis is inclined at theta okay this will come out to be theta if you evaluate that okay it is inclined at an angle theta to this n direction okay this angle you can check that so this sigma x will also be making an angle theta with the n so its component along the n direction will be whatever the force is there due to sigma x into cos theta so sigma x convert this to force sigma x into the area of the space ab so sigma x into ab into one unit this will give you the force into cos theta will resolve it along the n direction what will happen it will act in the opposite direction to this n so negative sign has been assigned over here okay so this is one more then again what you have to x y similarly this is for phase ac what i have taken this to x y is also along x direction here okay so this to x y into area of this phase ac to x y into ac to one unit into its component along n will be into cos theta because it is also parallel to x axis so to x y into ac into one into cos theta will give us the component along n direction since it will also be directed in a direction opposite to n the negative sign is taken for this also okay so we are done with these two forces which are directed in x direction now let us consider the forces which are directed in y direction okay so sigma y is one stress so what is the force due to the sigma y sigma y into ac into one okay sigma y into area of the space ac so that is here sigma y into ac into one unit okay and component of this in n direction will be if i resolve it it will come out to be sine theta the component will be carrying a uh, sine theta over here so this sigma y into ac into one into sine theta okay again that component will be directed in a direction opposite to the n direction so that negative sign is assigned over here okay so that is what sign convention what you are taking here so this is vertical force due to sigma y into ac into one right and what you have here is this angle is theta so this will be clearly 90 minus theta here okay so the component will along this n direction due to sigma y will come out to be this into sine theta over here okay so that you can try it out then further coming to next direction that is t direction 
Okay. So when I consider the equilibrium of all forces along this tangential direction, T direction, okay, or else uh, you have to simplify this equation. Actually, we want to get what is sigma in here. So what I'll do is uh, in this terms, what we have taken here, I just keep sigma n on left side and other terms have been taken to the right. Okay. So when I take them to the right, so they will have a ratio of the sides of the triangle here. So this ratio will be coming with these terms. Okay. So that is what here it is written here. This ratio EB by BC will represent cos theta, whereas EC by BC will represent sin theta. So accordingly, when I substitute for those trigonometric ratios in this equation and simplify that. I'll be getting the equation for normal stress on this inclined plane. Okay, what is sigma n on this inclined plane? So this is here. Sigma n is sigma x plus sigma y by two plus sigma x minus sigma y by two into cos of two theta plus two x y into sine of two theta. Okay, if I simplify this this term, this is what I'll be getting. Okay, so this sigma n now we are getting it in terms of the applied stresses. What were the applied stresses? These three stresses: sigma x, sigma y, and tau x y. Okay. So if you are given the inclination of the plane, this theta, okay, or if you choose any plane on which you want to find out the normal stress, knowing this applied stress, you can find it out. Okay. This is one normal stress on an inclined. Now to get what is the sharing stress on the inclined plane, what I'll be doing is I'll be considering the uh, equilibrium of forces in t direction along this t direction along this tangential direction okay so similarly what we did it for uh, this summation f n equal to zero here also what i'll do is i'll take all the forces which are there or which are acting on the faces of this element resolve them in t direction add them together and equate them to zero okay so tau nt is one stress okay so this tau nt multiplied by the area of this space bc that is tau nt into bc into 1 okay so this is tau nt into bc into 1 here okay bc into 1 right plus the sigma x in next direction if i consider sigma x into ab into 1 okay i want its component along this t direction it will be sin theta it will be carrying sin theta it is just resolving the force okay and its direction, when you resolve that, this will be 90 mass theta, so it will be directed along the t direction itself. So positive sign will be assigned for that. And tau xy, this one, which is again in x direction acting on phase AC. So tau xy into AC into one unit, okay? Resolving that in t direction, it will be into sine theta. Tau xy into area of phase AC, that is AC into one. When I resolve that, in this direction in t direction okay so that will be giving me this tau xy okay into ac into one into sine of theta so this is the direction along which i am considering the forces this is my x direction so tau xy is also along this direction this is theta this is 90 degrees so this will be 90 minus theta here okay from that what I'm, I can get is to x y into a c into one is here. Okay, this is the force along x axis directed along x direction. Along this direction, what you get is this to x y into a c into one into sine of theta. Okay, so that will be the component in t direction. So when you resolve, it will be acting in positive direction itself. Okay, so. That is how we arrive at these components along the directions. Okay. Now again, what we have to consider is there is one more uh, force. What we have, what is that? Along y directions. Okay. So what are the forces here along y direction? We have sigma y here. So let us resolve that sigma y in uh, t direction. So magnitude of forces sigma y into AC into one unit. So here sigma y into AC into one unit component along t direction will be cos of theta in this multiplied by cos theta okay so it will be directed in the negative t direction in the direction opposite to our t direction that is along this direction over here okay so for that purpose this minus sign is assigned over here okay and again in on this phase ab in y direction there is a sharing stress acting to xy 
So that will be rho x y into a b into 1, the force into cos theta. It is acting in the y direction. When I try to resolve it along t, I have to multiply cos theta with this. Okay. So minus again because it will be directed along a direction opposite to this t direction. Okay. So what I will do next is again rearrange these terms. Okay. And take tau nt on one side because I require what is the expression for tau nt and then come up with expression for tau nt here. Okay. This is what this is representing me there sharing stress on an inclined plane tau nt which is equal to sigma y minus sigma x divided by 2 into sine of 2 theta plus tau xy into cos of 2 theta. Okay. So these two are our stresses on the inclined plane. This is what we required over here normal stress and the sharing stress. Okay, the two stresses on the inclined plane, right? So once we get those expression for normal and sharing stress, our next interest is where the maximum stresses are and what are the maximum stresses? That is, we call them as principal stress. What I want to know is what is the maximum normal stress? There will be some plane which will be having maximum normal stress. Okay, we call that as principal plane. And the maximum normal stress we call them as principal stresses. These are all normal stresses, the principal stresses. So this sigma n we are just finding when sigma n will be maximum here. Okay. And what are the plane which are carrying this sigma n? Okay, this maximum normal stress. I am interested in that one. Okay. So for that, what you have to do is this expression, okay, expression for sigma n has to differentiate it. Okay, what is the variable here? The plane orientation can be varied. Okay, so which plane is carrying maximum normal stress? I am interested in that. So this has to be differentiated with respect to theta. If you differentiate this with respect to theta, okay, then equate it to zero. That will be telling you the value of maximum normal stress. Okay, if its derivative comes out to be, first derivative comes out to be, zero it will be giving us the maximum normal stress so we are going to do with that do that one here okay so if i try to differentiate this one okay th this is the equation for our sigma n here okay so this sigma x and sigma y they are constant they are applied stress they will not change even the 2xy only variable here is this theta so just differentiate the terms carrying theta here okay so what it results is here this will be minus 2 sine 2 theta okay so minus 2 sine 2 theta and sigma x minus sigma y by 2 as it is plus 2 cos 2 theta is the derivative of this term. Okay, 2 to cos 2 theta into 2 x y. Okay, so this entire term should come out to 0 when it is possible. So applied stresses may not be 0 always. Okay, the sigma x, sigma y and 2 x y, they may not be 0. All of them, if they are 0, there is no question of stress being developed on any plane. The entire element will be stress free. Okay, so we have to find a condition when it may come out to be zero or what you get is this tan theta. Okay, what is this tan theta? If you rearrange them, assuming that these stresses are not zero. So this tan theta will give you the value of theta one and theta two. Actually, we are getting what are the orientation of the principal planes here right now. Okay, theta one major principal plane, theta two minor principal plane. Okay, so if you take this sigma x and sigma y on one side and uh, arrange them, what you will get is expression for tan of 2 theta. Okay, or in turn, you can obtain what is theta 1 and theta 2. Okay, so what is theta 1? Actually, you will get what will be theta here. Okay, but there will be two such planes. Okay, tan ratio will be having same value for two angles here. Okay, let us say this theta 1 will be 1 by 2 tan inverse of. 2 to xy by sigma x minus sigma y. Okay. Theta 2 will be this plus 90 degree. Okay. Anyhow, this is our major principal plane. Okay. Just keep in mind theta 1 is representing the inclination of major principal plane. Okay. Also, this is representing the triangle here. Okay. Opposite hypotenuse. Opposite hypotenuse. Okay. So opposite hypotenuse. Opposite hypotenuse. And this is 2 theta. Also, we can note that this is nothing but sine of 2 theta divided by cos of 2 theta. I can express this tan in terms of this sine of 2 theta by cos of 2 theta also. 
or it also says sine of 2 theta is 2 times rho x y divided by this root of sigma x minus sigma y the whole square plus 4 times rho x y square that is from this triangle you are you can even get what is cos 2 theta and sine 2 theta also okay we require that uh, in coming uh, steps okay but right now what we got is what is the inclination of major principal plane now what we have here if i substitute this value of theta okay where i am going to substitute is in this equation of normal stress okay there was an equation for our normal stress here so in this equation of normal stress if i go for substituting the value of theta okay we got i told you what is sin 2 theta and what is cos 2 theta okay so here what we have here is sin 2 theta so if you consider this triangle you can express what is sin 2 theta and cos 2 theta i have written them here sin 2 theta will be plus or minus 2 to xy this opposite side divided by hypotenuse okay this hypotenuse this is a right angle triangle this is your hypotenuse value square of this plus square of this under square root okay similarly cos of 2 theta is this adjacent by hypotenuse okay so we got to know what is sin 2 theta and what is cos 2 theta now what i'm doing is i'm using this in my expression of sigma n over here okay so what was the sigma n equal to sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 into cos of 2 theta plus 2 x y into sin of 2 theta okay what i have done is i substituted for this cos 2 theta and sin 2 theta in this expression okay so here in this expression okay so that is what is done here once i substitute and simplify now what i am getting is the principal stresses okay here you can see sigma 1 and sigma 2 are written here so sigma 1 is our maximum principal stress or major principal stress sigma 2 is our minor principal stress okay sigma 1 is the major principal stress and sigma 2 minor principal stress that is maximum principal maximum normal stress and minimum normal stress sigma 1 is representing maximum and sigma 2 is representing minimum that is once you will be using this positive sign plus sign to get maximum value other time you will be using this minus sign to get the minimum value these are the maximum and minimum normal stress on an inclined plane okay so that is giving us the value of the required stresses on the inclined plane okay is that clear please check your doubts first thing is what is sigma n and what is square mm -hmm. t okay then with that we try to obtain the maximum and minimum normal stresses 18 cv 10 2 kl 18 cv 10 2 kl 18 cv 10 I want you to discuss about this uh, uh, doubts over here. Okay, this is one one derivation, one uh, important derivation in this module, entire module. Okay, rest other state of stress may be derived from this itself. If we, this is clear for you, rest every other state of stress can be obtained from this. Okay, conditions of equilibrium have been used. Normal stress and uh, sharing stress. We arrived at that on simplifying the conditions of equilibrium. Okay, then what we went for is what is the maximum value of normal stress? We try to derive that. Okay, so we differentiated the expression for normal stress. Okay, and equated that to zero. Okay, d sigma n by d theta was done and it was equated to zero. So that directly gave us what is the orientation of our planes here. Okay, so this is what it is given tan of 2 theta. It is two times two x y plus sigma x minus sigma y. This is nothing but this is clearly representing one triangle over here with 
uh, y and x. This is your opposite and this is your adjacent side. Okay, and is the ratio of opposite by adjacent. So I just shown that over here. Opposite adjacent. Okay, Pythagoras theorem root of two times two x y whole square plus sigma x minus sigma y the whole square. Okay, this is give this will give you hypotenuse value. Okay, now with this triangle, keeping this triangle in my reference, I found what is sine two theta and what is cos two theta. Okay. Same when I substitute them back in this equation of sigma m, that will give me what is maximum and minimum normal stresses. Why it is a maximum and minimum normal stresses? Because these are the stresses which are acting on the principal planes. This is the condition what gave us the orientation of principal plane. Okay, this condition gave us the orientation of principal plane. Whatever the stresses act on this plane, they will be the maximum and minimum stresses okay so that is how it came with this okay so with if this is clear for you another two state of stress will be by axial state of stress okay uh, this derivation you try it what we did in the similar way three basic steps i told you are there so same you do it for by axial state of stress but if you remember general state of stress expressions these can be clearly obtained what happens in by axial state of stress is there are two normal stresses which are acting on that element no sharing stress okay so normal stresses are acting in two mutually perpendicular directions so by axial two along two axes by axial state of stress another is state of pure shear Okay, what happens in this case is the normal stresses will be absent. Okay, so what we have is normal stresses will not be there. Don't worry about the direction. It holds good for any direction of these stresses. What I considered in the, my derivation is all the positive sign convention directions here. So this is a state of pure shear. No normal stresses are present here. Okay, so you should be able to arrive at the principal stresses in these two cases. Try with that. Okay. Try to derive for these two cases. But we can equate this by remembering remembering what is the expression for general state of stress. Okay. If it is a state of by axial state of stress, what happens? This term should be zero. Okay. This is the expression what you have in case of by axial state of stress. Okay. Here this term will get to zero when it is by axial state of stress. In this case, okay, here tau x y is zero. Here, what is happening? Sigma x and sigma y are zero. So that's why what, what I said is, if you remember for general state of stress, you can get the expression for any other state of stress. Even uniaxial state of stress, what we did, equate sigma y and tau x y to zero here. You should be able to get back the expression what we had for uniaxial state of stress. You should be able to get these two expression in that when you equate the sigma y and 2xy to 0. Okay, so this is for general state what I have taken up. Okay, try it for by axial and pure shear. Okay, you have to practice in this uh, particular uh, subject uh, to understand this. You should practice them. Okay, that is the only way. Any difficulty in that or any doubts, or if you are not understood while der deriving this, please tell me. There will be confusion when you try these things, but right now, what I have explained, uh, are there any doubts in that part? You want me to repeat any particular step in this derivation? Even the maximum shear stress can be obtained by differentiating this expression with respect to theta okay so maximum shear stress you can get it by from that okay so what happens uh, if you differentiate this with respect to theta you'll get two max okay so differentiating that with respect to theta what it turns out to be is the maximum shear stress what you get is root of sigma x minus sigma y by 2 the whole square plus 2 x y the whole square 
okay sorry this is sigma y minus sigma x okay as long as it is under square it doesn't matter but sigma y minus sigma x okay i'll just uh, explain one problem for you here okay so this is the one problem what is given to you is a state of stress is shown here okay and you are asked to determine principal planes and the principal stresses and also find the maximum shear stress and the planes on which it acts okay so let us look into this here so two planes ab and bc which are at right angles to each other carry shear stresses of intensity 17.5 newton per mm square this is the shearing stress which is acting on the two mutually perpendicular planes okay so ab and bc on these two planes the shearing stress is 17.5 newton per mm square okay so these two planes are also carrying a tensile stress of 70 newton per mm square and a compressive stress of 35 newton per mm square respectively okay what they are saying is the plane ab is subjected to a tensile stress of 70 newton per mm square and the plane bc is subjected to a compressive stress of 35 newton per mm square okay so what are the stresses which are acting on the plane on the faces of the elements is given to us okay that is to xy is given to us here 17.5 newton per mm square and sigma x is given to us okay so 70 newton per mm square and sigma y is 35 newton per mm square here okay so with this you have to find out the principal plane and the principal stresses and also the maximum shear stress right so what you need to do is consider the general state of stress first thing is draw this uh, state of stress on the element okay whatever the stresses are given applied stresses first you represent them with this diagram okay then you go for using that expression for uh, principal stresses okay so just now we came across this expression of principal stresses so here the principal stresses what we had were expression for principal stress so sigma 1 2 major and minor principal stress they are given by sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus or minus root of sigma x minus sigma y by 2 the whole square plus 2x by the whole square okay so this is what you have so if i use that one what you have is if you just have to substitute this sigma x and sigma y with proper sign convention okay here what we have is sigma x is tension so sign convention as per our sign convention such force tensile forces uh, stress is considered positive whereas compressive stress is considered negative if you look at the shearing stress they are a uh, positive shear stress because left side downward shear force and right side upward shear force this is positive okay so uh, shear force the sign will be positive 2xy will be carrying a positive sign sigma x will also be carrying a positive sign whereas sigma y will be having a negative sign because it is compressive in nature okay compressive in nature here okay if that is clear then we can substitute these values in this expression for principal stresses okay so this is the expression for our principal stress so if i just consider plus sign between these two terms first it will give me the major principal stress okay sigma one which is equal to the sigma x plus sigma y by two okay sigma x plus sigma y by two plus root of sigma x minus sigma y by two the uh, whole square plus 2x by the square okay so this is what the major principal stress is uh, here the sign it is plus okay so the sign please correct that uh, please calculate on your one i have given you the uh, data over here okay expression is here for our uh, maximum normal stresses the major and minor principal stress take this expression substitute for sigma x sigma y and 2xy from this problem don't consider this one 
just check and tell me what will be the value of major principal stress sigma 1 and minor principal stress sigma 2. Okay, this is correct here, right. This should come out correct because uh, the sigma y itself is negative, right? It is got no problem with that one. It is correct. Why uh, minus is coming is sigma y is compression and this is minus 35. So sigma x, okay, 75 plus minus 35, that is 75 minus 35 by 2. And here 75 minus of minus 35, which is coming out to be plus 35, 75 plus 35. Okay, try and tell me what is the value of this major principal stress first. Sigma 2 is our minor principal stress. What is the value for major principal stress sigma 1? How much you will get for that value of sigma 1? 77.7. 7. 77.7. Six. 70 77.716 newton 7, per mm square 77.716 so this is uh, not correct value 77.7 newton per mm square okay this is a major principal stress what you are telling for okay what about minor principal stress? Just check the calculation. 70, okay, 70 value. This is 70. 70. It's okay. Uh, you have done it for 75 Newton per mm square, right? Uh, who is that one? Uh, okay, it's okay. Don't don't worry. You take this uh, value of sigma axis 75 only. No problem. Uh, I have gone wrong in substituting. I have taken this as 75. This answer is for actually 70. Now, you don't change anything. Let it be. You have calculated it for 75. Not an issue. You just in this problem, you take it for 75. The sigma is 75. Okay. What about uh, in your uh, case? Again, what is sigma 2 then? The minor principal stress. That is a minimum normal stress on the plane. What it comes out? These values are for 70. Sigma 1 and sigma 2. Now, what you calculated is for? 75 and 35. It's okay. This Sir, minor principal stress is uh, 37.716. Okay, you are getting minus or plus? So minus. Okay, this is minus 37.71 Newton per mm square. Okay, so this is how you get the major and minor uh, principal stresses. The values may differ. You may get uh, some other values of these uh, applied stresses. But this is the way in which you calculate the major and minor principal stresses. So it is indicating that major principal stress is tension. And minor principal stress is compression. Okay, that is one thing. By science, that is what you can control. Now, what we want is 
what is the inclination of these planes carrying the major and minor principal stresses okay these are defining the principal planes major principal plane and minor principal plane first we will find what is the orientation of major principal plane so it is given by tan 2 theta which is equal to 2 times 2 xy by sigma x minus sigma y okay you do it for 75 only if, what answer you gave here for 75 for the same value you do it okay what you get from that theta value it is representing the major principal plane here for okay. seven, yes 30.8 degrees how much 30 30.308 uh, theta values 0 0.308, just 0 0.308. 0 0.5. Uh, 0 0.3080. Okay, I will take it as 0 0.30 degrees. 0 0.30 degrees. Theta. Is that okay? 2 times 2xy divided by sigma s, x in your case is 75. Okay, minus of minus 35 plus 35. So you are getting theta as 0 0.030 degrees. Okay, this is major principal plane. Okay, if you require minor principal plane, which is theta 2, orientation of minor principal plane. What is this minor principal plane? It is a plane which is carrying this minimum normal stress or minor principal stress. Okay, so it will be just theta 1 plus 90 degrees. It is will be at a right angle to this major principal plane. Okay, theta 1 plus 90 degrees. Just add 90 degrees to this, you will get it the orientation of minor principal plane 90.30 degrees. This is what the two planes are major and minor principal planes. Others, please see what you get. You have if you are not getting any correct values for 70 or 75, doesn't matter. Check from your calculation. Please tell me if you are not able to get that. So this is about major and minor principal stresses, okay, and major and minor principal planes. One more thing that was that is asked in that question is what is the maximum shear stress, okay? So maximum shear stress expression for that is under root sigma y minus sigma x the whole square uh, x by two the whole square plus two x y the square, okay? So if you substitute for that sigma x sigma y and two x y the resulting value will be here okay that is the maximum sharing stress Others, please calculate that. Okay. I cannot uh, just transfer all this data to you. It, ca it cannot happen like that. You have to practice and then only you will be understanding how to deal with such problems. If okay, there is one more second problem what is shown on your screen. Okay, it is also a state of general stress. Okay, try finding normal stress and shear stress acting on a plane inclined at an angle 120 degrees with reference to the 100 MPA stress. If you are finished, if you are finished, just read this question. Try to get the uh, this one. What is asked? Is that uh, second problem visible to you all on your screen? The second, what is shown here? Is it visible or no?
no sir hmm? now now yes sir if it has gone tell me and don't put your usn i am not going to take the usn in the chat box now only 15 cv 959 19 cv 59 is absent if you are putting the usn now 19 cv 59 who is that Nineteen CV fifty nine. Are you able to understand this problem? The second one statement. What is given here? Again. A point in a body is subjected to a tensile stress of hundred MPa and seventy MPa acting on two mutually perpendicular directions. Okay, the point is also subjected to a shear stress of magnitude fifty MPa. Okay, so we have tensile stresses. The normal stresses are tensile, so both of them are positive. Okay, and the shearing stress is fifty MPa. Okay. So this is the shearing stress which is acting, and the normal stress and uh, on the two planes. Okay, hundred MPa and seventy MPa on one plane. So you have to find what is the normal stress on an inclined plane. Okay, and what is the inclination of that plane? It is inclined at an angle of one twenty degree with the hundred MPa plane. With the hundred MPa plane over here. Okay, so this is the plane. What I have taken. Okay, I have taken this hundred MPa stress acting along x direction. So, this is the plane on which it will be acting. With respect to this plane, the inclination of oblique plane is one twenty degrees. Okay, this is one twenty degrees. Okay. So earlier we have just considered an acute angle here. So now it is coming out to be one hundred and twenty degrees. So this is how it is. Okay. So you have to find what is the normal stress and shearing stress acting on this inclined plane. We had expression for sigma n, so sigma n was given by sigma x plus sigma y by two plus sigma x minus sigma y by two into cos of two theta plus two x y into sine theta. Use this expression for that. Sorry, this is cos two theta plus two x y sine of two theta. Okay, so you have to find this normal stress and also what is the shearing stress to n t over here. Okay. What is the expression for our two n t in this case? We had it here. Just now in derivation, we have come across that this twenty. So twenty sigma x minus sigma y minus sigma x by two sine two theta plus two x by cos two theta. Sigma y minus sigma x by two. Okay, so just find. We are asked to find the normal and shearing stress. So first is find this normal and shearing stress over there. I hope the screen is there on your uh, this one. A 
also put your USN in the chat box. Just the USN. Put your USN in the chat box. Try this one. You have the expression for all these. I want you to try this. First is derivation for by XL and pure state of uh, stress, pure shear. Then try this problem. Okay. General state of stress, we have the expression. If that is it, try it. 19 CV 59. So tomorrow we will take up this uh, solution for this uh, problem. Don't know. Tomorrow Saturday, I think Som is not there, right? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, you just try with this. I want you to do the derivation for the two state of stress, okay? And also this problem. On Monday, we shall continue with the problem and this. In this case, if these concepts are clear to you, the problems will be substitution type problems, okay? So don't neglect that part, okay? You have to just practice to gain expertise in this. You have to dedicate some time for that. Okay, we shall exit. If you have put your USM, exit, but to this derivation for the two state of stress. I'll show you how it will be. Nineteen CV zero zero seven. Nineteen CV forty. Nineteen CV thirty six. All three absent. Nineteen CV forty. 